What's up, guys? It's MB Boxing. I just finished up watching Gabriel Flores Jr. versus Giovanni Carrera, and this was a 10 rounder in the lightweight division. And this fight was Saturday, July 23rd, from the Grand Casino in Hinckley, Minnesota. And this fight was broadcasted on ESPN, ESPN Plus, or in the ESPN app. And in this fight, Giovanni Cabrera absolutely dominated Gabriel Flores Jr. I personally scored this bout 99-88 to in favor of Giovanni Cabrera. And the three judges all scored this bout 98-89, to all in favor of Cabrera. So Cabrera scored three knockdowns in total. He dominated almost every single round in this fight, and he made it look easy. So just to break this fight down... Um, Cabrera got off to a great start in round number one, where inside a minute he was able to score two knockdowns on Flores Jr. So the first knockdown happened with a big, um, sort of big left hand from Cabrera, but he at first fainted with the right, then came in with the left once um, Flores Jr. dropped his guard down, and it was a perfect shot right on the chin. Flores went down, got back up, but then was still obviously stunned from that first knockdown. His legs still weren't there. Then Cabrera came in, jumped in with two big left hands, again, dropping Flores. So that was a big 10-7 round for Cabrera. But then in round number two, actually, Flores bounced back pretty good, considering that he got dropped twice in the first. But I still thought that um, Cabrera edged it, even though that was definitely one of the rounds that you could have gave to Flores Jr. But then round number three was another big round for um, Cabrera, uh, because Flores seemed like he was hurt a bit, um, in that round as well, towards the beginning, uh, round four, I gave to Cabrera just because he got worked, um, but round five was also a big round because Flores was dropped again, he was coming forward and he got hit with a big one too, he got backed up in the corner, was getting hit with big shots, then a big check right hook from Cabrera, landed on the side of the head of Flores Jr., dropping him almost face first to the canvas, Round six and seven were very similar to round five, besides a, besides there not being a knockdown, where Cabrera just easily outworked him. And the thing is, with Cabrera's style, I actually thought that this fight was going to be much closer, and I actually was thinking that Flores was going to win this fight, if I'm going to be 100% honest, because when I watched Cabrera um, previous, obviously, obviously, to this fight, I mean, he kept his hands down, he just looked sloppy, but that's just his style. I thought he just looked sloppy, I thought he would get hit by, with, or I thought he would get hit by a guy like Flores with fast hands, but he was able to completely neutralize Flores' attack, he was just very cool in there, um, as in cool, he was just collected, he was composed, he was just very, very, he was just calm in there, I mean, he was keeping his hands down, using, utilizing his footwork, getting out of the way of punches, um, he just looked very cool. I mean, really, I mean, he was just very calm, very relaxed. I mean, he just looked like he was just sparring almost. I mean, he wasn't really, it didn't even look like he was really overcommitting with his shots as well with the power. He was just perfectly timing his shots on Flores, and that's why he, that's why he was hurting Flores. That's why he was dropping him. I mean, he was just really getting him, um, on the end of his punches, and it was just really working well for him. But then, um, going on to the eighth round, um, yeah, Cabrera lost that round, if I'm going to be 100% honest, but that was only to the fact that, um, he really started to, I mean, in that round, he just didn't really work as hard as the other rounds. He didn't really throw much. It was just really a lack of offense for him in that round. That's why I gave that round to Flores Jr. Um, and Flores Jr. really came forward a lot more in that round. Then in round nine, um, it was very similar for Flores to round eight, where he was coming forward a lot. But um, Cabrera started to put a press on the offense again, landing big shots um, in that round. But it was a closer round compared to the other ones. But then round 10 was also a big round for Cabrera because towards the end, Flores Jr. was sort of getting rocked with some big shots um, from Cabrera, backed up into the corner. He was really taking a beating in that round as well. And it was a pretty clear round for Cabrera. So yeah, that being said, I think at most you could have gave Flores Jr. maybe two to three rounds. I only gave him one, but um, yeah, this was a dominating performance from Cabrera. And this goes into the question, what is next for Giovanni Cabrera? Boxwork has him t ranked top 25, um, and he could definitely have some big fights lined up for him next on top rank. But um, I think before he has a big fight, he might take on maybe a guy who's ranked top 100, top 75, Top 50 just to get a stay busy fight before maybe getting scheduled to face 
someone that's inside the top 15 to top 20 that's fought on top rank before, or that's fought on top rank before, that has a good record. Um, someone like maybe a Jermaine Ortiz, that could be a very solid co-main or even main event. Um, he could face someone like a Jeremiah Nakatia, who's coming off that big win over Miguel Burchelt. He could even face maybe someone like a Luis Alberto Lopez, and Lopez is the guy who did beat Flores Jr. first and gave him his first ever loss, obviously. So that could also be a really, really good fight um, in the near future for Cabrera, who's now 21-0, I forgot to mention. Uh, yeah, he's undefeated. He only has seven knockouts, but he's a very good boxer as well, and he's just a very calm and collected fighter, as I mentioned many times in this video. But as for Gabriel Flores Jr. losing here for the second time, his last three fights have been very tough. First losing to Lopez, then having a tough fight against Abraham Montoya, then now this fight, I mean, yeah, he got dominated again. In both of his losses, he purely got dominated, and um, he really just got dictated in both of those fights. I mean, he lost almost every single round combined. Out of the 20 rounds he fought against Lopez and Cabrera, he only won like two of them in total. I mean, his, both of his losses were devastating and dominant. And the thing is, he's still a very young fighter. But um, I think in his next fight, he has to move back down to 130. In this fight, he was specifically talking a lot about moving up to 135, that this is weight, whatever. He needs to, one, work on his strength and conditioning. And two, he just needs to move back down in weight. I mean, he can't handle the guys at 135. And plus, he doesn't have enough power to handle them. So I think in his next couple fights, they need to put him up against some lower level competition just so we could get some more confidence before maybe putting him up against another guy who's in the top 25, maybe that he could win against or even lose against. But really, he needs to move back down and wait. Um, that's really just the big thing. So overall, Giovanni Cabrera dominates Gabriel Flores Jr., dropping him three times and getting a wide and clear unanimous decision victory to stay in beaten now at 21-0. and And yeah, that's really it. I'm MB Boxing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.